have there been changes in the exams and the qualification process or maybe the, the underlying skills required in exams over the years? Have there been an accelerated changes in the last couple of years? So what I love, what I love about the job is that it's not static. What I love about the job is that preparing young people for professional qualifications, for academic qualifications, to go into the workplace, that is something which is, has experienced dynamic change over the years. And Yvonne, you're right, you alluded to the pace of change. And the pace of change has accelerated over the last 10 years with effective online examinations, um, with the effect of COVID, with the existence of Google. Back in the day, a lot of the questions in exams were, what is the definition of? Right. No one needs to know the definition. No one needs to be a parrot. Yeah. We all have Google. Yeah. So if we're going to test knowledge, mm, no, we're, we're testing skills. Mm. Students are, students have a more interesting qualification, have a more interesting, richer learning experience, I think, now mm -hmm. than they used to. Mm. Professionals used to hold knowledge to ransom, if you will. The reason you came to me as a professional was because I knew the law. I knew what was supposed to be debited and credited. I knew, you know, because I had all these big books behind my, you know, leather upholstered desk, <laughs> fancy office, you know. And that was, that was what you paid for. Whereas, as you say, I think Google is probably the most impactful <laughs> of the entire profession because your client doesn't need you to tell them what the definition of an asset is because a quick Google is going to be, is going to give them YouTube videos, tutorials, basic, simple, you know, for idiots, for how to means and you're like, I mean, there's a million solutions and a million different, you know, results from you know, one search. What do they need your definition for? They need a solution to their bespoke individual right. problem. If right. they've got a property that's overseas, and that property that's overseas has burnt down and they have an insurance claim. Now, that is a complex set of right. accounting issues. Right. It involves an understanding and application of ISA 21. It involves an application of ISA 36 impairment. Mm. Now the asset has burnt down. Mm. It, it's no longer, it's due uh, an impairment review. Mm. It, in, it, it implies that they need to bring in ISA 37 um, because they've got an insurance claim. So, yep. so students need to know the standards. They need to know the definitions. Don't get me wrong. They yeah, need yeah. to know the definitions. But at the final level, at the professional level, it's not about an asset is impaired when the carrying value exceeds the recoverable <laughs> amount. It's not about the definition of a contingent asset is. It's about seeing a yeah. quasi cartoon real life client problem mm -hmm. that the client can't key that in to Google and get an answer. Yeah. The client needs yeah. the accountant to join the dots. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and use the judgments. Yeah. And, and synthesize. And it's very easy the way that we're taught or the syllabus, unfortunately, but understandably is siloed. You know, it isn't in isolation. So it's, most of my students will study today i'm learning in payments tomorrow i'm learning investment property and there's never really time to integrate this properly because your client is not going to come to you and go i have a problem with an impairment they're expecting you to say building burnt down and you tell me what's going on. And they're expecting you to say, okay, this is going to be the impact on whatever bond or mortgage you have over it. This is going to be the impact on the accounting. This is going to be your tax implications. This is going to be your cash flow implications. This is going to be what the auditors want to see, or this could be your risk as far as tax is going. So, you know, your client is not going to nudge you and go, okay, so tell me about, um, you know, tell me about the you know, the provision or the contingent liability here. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So maybe your client doesn't know this stuff exists, you know? 